The markets in May, when Bernanke announced it last May, moved very quickly to anticipate this. But since that time, I think the markets have actually behaved quite well and are looking for signals from the Fed and hanging virtually on every word that uh, Yellen uh, utters. But over a period of time, I think there's a feeling that the Fed will do this in a responsible way, not in a way that disrupts capital markets, but in a way that has a sort of steady process of tapering that over time convinces people that this uh, QE won't last forever, the tapering will continue, but will give a sense of stability to financial markets over the course of the next several months and beyond. I think the best way back to normality is to continue the tapering at a measured pace, give the market as much transparency as the Fed can possibly do, but also address some of the other issues. One big issue is small and medium-sized enterprises have found it more difficult to obtain capital. And in the United States, they're the biggest providers of jobs, of new jobs. So somehow you have to make capital markets work better to create more inclusive growth. The second thing is that the employment picture in the United States, while improving, needs to improve at a more rapid rate. There's still a lot of people who are not getting jobs who want to. There are a number of people who are not actively seeking jobs, who are sort of out of the labor market. Uh, labor market participation rates are actually very disappointing. Finding ways of giving people more training, more opportunities, more capital, so that you can get more people into the jobs market. Well, the central banks, I think, have done what they had to do, which was to uh, create uh, the opportunities for banks to increase lending. Banks uh, themselves have to make these decisions. The, the, the Federal Reserve and other central banks can't create credit. They can enhance prospects for the financial markets to do so, but it depends on the bank's willingness and ability to lend, and it depends on the willingness and ability of companies to borrow. And that decision really has to be made by the private sector. Central banks can't do that. There always are going to be imbalances that build up in the system. There's no way of avoiding that. That is going to be an essential, a, a, a part of the way the system operates. You can't totally avoid crises and you can't totally avoid imbalances. But I think having a greater degree of transparency and being aware that as these imbalances begin to grow, countries take action, either individually or collectively, to reduce those. And also, I think, when you have countries become too heavily dependent on international capital markets or become hooked on international capital when rates, interest rates are low, then when interest rates go up or capital markets contract, those countries are vulnerable to the outflow of capital. Those kinds of large imbalances, I think, we have to anticipate could become problems and avoid their becoming problems by being a little more prescient about what we do to avoid them. They were an experiment, and we're still seeing how this experiment is going to play out. The other thing that's an even bigger experiment is, how do you get out of them? How do you reduce your dependence on QEs or variants thereof? And that's an even bigger experiment because countries have really not had much experience or central banks have not had much experience in doing this. So, we're in uncharted territory there too, and I think they're going to have to be very careful. They're going to have to do it in a very uh, measured, sound fashion. That's going to be a challenge. Cooperation among central banks is the best it's ever been. They talk to one another all the time, and they're learning how they can better regulate, how they can learn from each other's regulatory and supervisor experience, and make their own banking systems more important. And, and they all have to do it together because as we know, these banking systems are interrelated. If there's a problem with one country's financial markets, it affects others. So they all have an interest in doing the right thing at home, and they all have an interest in working with one another because the system is so uh, vulnerable to a mistake in one country adversely affecting other countries.